Hey, my friends, it's Tom with Watchin' River. Thanks for joining me today. It's a good day that the Lord has made for us, right? To serve him as we await this pre-tribulation rapture. Uh, you guys are going to hear a lot of rain today because it is a very rainy day. So I hope that's okay. Um, got a lot of stuff to talk about today. The world has taken another dark turn in these last days as we await the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. But before we get to the dark stuff, let's please, let's go to scripture and read some verses about love, the love of God, the love of Jesus, because this world needs it. Man, do we need love. We don't need the, the hippie kind of, we don't need the Ringo peace and love. No, no, we need the love of God. We need the love of Jesus in this world. That could actually fix this world. Let's go to some scripture. First Corinthians chapter 13, verses four and five. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, and it thinks no evil. Big shortage of that in this world today, isn't there? 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14. Let all that you do be done with love. That's easier said than done, isn't it? Let all that you do be done with love. That means commenting on other people's news stories and videos. It means all. Let everything we do be done with love. Psalm 143, verse 8. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. For in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk. For I lift up my soul to you. Amen. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 14. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. I love that. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. All praise to Jesus. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. Let's do a couple more. Ephesian, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2. With all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. That's how we're supposed to deal with each other, right? In love. We're all part of the body of Christ. It's beautiful. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. That is true. I've always said, it's kind of hard to sin if you're walking in love around everyone, because most sin hurts somebody, right? John 15, verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. It's from the mouth of Jesus. Love one another as I have as I have loved you. It's powerful. First Corinthians chapter thirteen verse two. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. That always speaks to me. If I have not love, I have nothing. So there are a few times in our lives where we have those moments where we say nothing will ever be the same again. If you remember those of you old enough, which is most of you, I think, to remember 9-11. I remember when that happened, I was living in a two-family house and I ran down to the first floor because I was working at home alone. And I went to the neighbors downstairs and and I said, turn on the TV, because they didn't know about what was happening on 9-11. And when they turned it on, they were shocked. And I remember the first thing out of my mouth was, nothing will ever be the same again. This is a turning point in the world. Nothing will ever be the same again. And anyone who lived pre-9-11 and post-9-11 knows that that was exactly the case. And then there was the turning point 
in 2020, the beginning of the, pan the pandemic. And I remember thinking and saying at that point, wow, this is a step toward the last days. Nothing will ever be the same again. And life changed dramatically that day. Changed dramatically. Well, I, f I feel like right now there's this major shift going on. There's this major moment right now that feels like we're approaching it that nothing will ever be the same again. Are you guys feeling it? We're on the eve of something. We're on the eve of something big. And when I say eve, I mean eve. Could it be something that leads to the rapture? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you guys feel like something has shifted? Please let me know in the comments. Do you guys feel like we're on the eve of something enormous? And and we don't know what it is, but do you feel like we're on the eve of something enormous? Please let me know. I'll tell you, this is not <laughs> this is not a time to be a prodigal son or daughter and walk away from Jesus. This is not the time. Trust me when I say this, we always need Jesus. We always need Jesus. And we should always be clinging to Jesus. But right now, in these last days, you're going to be swallowed up in this world if you're not clinging to Jesus, if you're not in the Word. And if you're not clinging to Jesus, every you're going to be swallowed up. The lies and deception in this world are ramping up every single day. And we're on the eve of something enormous. I really believe it. So last night, I'm sure most of you have heard this, but I know a lot of people that watch this channel say, I don't watch any news. But there was a major, major terrorist attack in Russia, in Moscow. And uh, I'm going to cover some of what went on there. And uh, am I going to be able to tell you with certainty what is going on? No. Because anywhere you go, I'm getting different stories left and right. But I'm going to kind of cover it all, then you can decide. I, I haven't made a decision. I don't know what's going on. But I'll just tell you that there was, right as of right now, there was 115 people shot dead in a concert hall as of right now. Um, then they lit the building on fire. And they some people are saying there were Hundreds, hundreds trapped in there before the fire. Nobody has verified that yet. But I'm going to just kind of give you the, the gist of what's going on. It says, Russia says the suspects in the Crocus or Crocus, I don't know how they say it, Crocus concert hall attacked, uh, detained as the death toll rises to 115. So the death toll on the attack on the concert hall has risen to 115. As eyewitnesses recall the moment that attackers armed with guns and incendiary devices stormed the popular venue on Friday night. Friday's assault is the deadliest terror attack in Russia's capital in decades. They said that unidentified people at that time had broken in wearing camouflage and they started shooting. And I, you know, you know what I'm going to say. I always say it. Pray for the people, because sometimes we, we just instantly jump into these things. And it's like, all right, who's to blame? Who's this? Who's that? And I'm always like, wait a minute. Like, there's so many hurting families right now. Regardless of the politics of how this happened or who did it, like, pray for the people there. The Ministry of Culture, the Russian Federation, said all mass and entertainment events in federal cultural institutions are canceled for the coming days. And then we got ISIS claiming responsibility for this attack. Do I believe that? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of leaning against it right now, but I'll get into that. It says ISIS has claimed responsibility for an attack at a large concert hall in the Moscow, Russia area that left more than 60 people dead. Now it's 115 and nearly 150 injured. I believe that's now near 300. The attack began when gunmen 
um, donning combat gear, burst into the Crocus City Hall, where concert goers were gathering to hear the Russian band picnic, and they opened fire. The gunmen also threw explosives inside the concert hall during the attack, which set the building on fire. People were being evacuated, but some remained trapped inside the burning building, Russia media said. I don't, you know, I'm not jumping on the ISIS thing. I'm just, I'm just not jumping on that right now. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the re just, just the reasons why I think it might not be. Them. I'm not saying it wasn't them. Usually when they claim responsibility for something, they usually have done it, but they don't usually run away. When it's a jihad kind of an attack, they usually shoot until they shoot themselves or somebody eliminates them. These guys ran away. They all got into a car and started driving away. It says 11 people, including four terrorists who participated in the Moscow attack, are detained. According to the Kremlin, the death toll climbed to 115. They said that uh, they showed a picture of four of the six terrorists, and they said they're all from Tajikistan. Uh, Amir Sarfati said all 11 suspects are apparently Tajik Muslims. They claim they were paid to kill as many as possible. The big question is who sent them? They were highly trained with many weapons and explosives, evacuation from the scene, and an orderly organization. Russian intelligence claims they were in contact with officials in Ukraine. So Russia immediately pointed the finger at Ukraine. Ukraine is saying, we didn't do it. Uh, the United States said ISIS did it. Russia is pointing the finger at the United States saying, of course, the United States is going to say ISIS did it. They always blame the Middle East. Ukraine is saying, we didn't do it, but we think somebody, some people in Ukraine have said, we think somebody in Russia did this to themselves. Like, false flag. Kind of thing. Russia says Moscow concert hall attackers had contacts in Ukraine. I guess, according to the story, can't verify this. According to the story, the, the people who did this attack got into a car and they were speeding toward Ukraine, and they were outside of Ukraine, but speeding toward it when they, you know, they, the law enforcement shot out the tires and stopped the car and got the guys out of it. Amir Sarfati had another interesting observation. He said, Russian MPs on the attack in Moscow said this evil will not go unanswered. Revenge is on the way. I wonder what Russian revenge will look like for a terrorist attack with a large number of dead and wounded carried out by terrorists in the sovereign territory of Russia. You're about to watch the biggest display of hypocrisy both on the ground and in the UN. Can't argue with that. Can't argue with that. We'll see what they say about how they should retaliate against the people who did this. Man, I can't wait to be with Jesus. And I really, really do believe we're in the very, very last days. We're about to be face to face. If you know Jesus, you got nothing to worry about. Just rest and cling. Rest in him and cling to him. Because we're about to be face to face with him. This world is not sustainable. The things that are going on around this world, not sustainable. All right, let's hop over to Israel. I saw a video where they're distributing leaflets this morning over Rafah, warning civilians of impending airstrikes. Once again, the people that are supposedly committing genocide are dropping millions of leaflets to tell the people, move out of here. They're really not good at genocide, I'll tell you that. And there's also very strong attacks in Gaza going on right now. This is from Mail Online. Netanyahu says he is going into Rafah with or without American support. The Israeli Prime Minister tells Blinken he is going to finish Hamas in and will do it alone if he doesn't get U.S. backing in a huge snub to the Biden administration. Who else, you know, is America really standing up for Israel? 
is America standing up for Israel? Is America looking for Israel's interest in this? No, no, we're on Hamas's side. We make it look like we're with Israel. But right now, we're not for them. This is from Insider Paper. Full-scale Rafah operation risks further isolating Israel, according to Blinken. A full-scale ground offensive against Gaza's Rafah would further isolate Israel internationally, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said on Friday. We share Israel's goal of defeating Hamas. A major military ground operation in Rafah is not the way to do it. Oh. He told reporters in Israel, it risks further isolating Israel around the world. Well, how do you suppose we do it? Should we bake them cookies? Give out sweets? Please stop. So I thought this was interesting, the timing of the Russian attack, just because I always know that God said, if you bless Israel, I will bless you. If you curse it, I will curse you. The U.S.-Gaza ceasefire resolution was vetoed by China and Russia yesterday at the U.N. Security Council. Russia and China on Friday vetoed a U.S. draft U.N. Security Council resolution that called for an immediate and sustained ceasefire in Gaza, along with the release of all the remaining hostages held by Hamas. Russia and China on Friday vetoed the U.S.-led draft resolution of the Security Council on a ceasefire in Gaza, joining Arab countries in saying it did not pressure Israel with Moscow accusing Washington of a hypocritical spectacle. The whole world is quickly turning against Israel. The entire world. We said it on October 7th when everyone was really feeling compassion for what had happened to Israel. And a good portion of the world was like, wow, that was terrible what happened to you. And I said that day, this ain't going to last. They're going to turn on Israel fast. And they, boy, did they. But it's the turning is getting more and more intense as we head into these very, very last days. This is from Israel Today. 120,000 Muslims prayed atop the Temple Mount in Jerusalem yesterday, the second Friday of Ramadan, which I call Ramakam because it's pretty calm there. The prayers ended peacefully and without disruption. There continued to be efforts on Arabic social media to incite an uprising on the Temple Mount during Ramadan, but thus far, Hamas's hopes of escalating the conflict have not been realized. We'll see what next week brings and tomorrow brings and today brings because it could change on a dime any of these things but so far thank god it's been peaceful there all right earthquakes there was a 4.9 in the red sea yesterday 4.9 in the red sea there was a 5.4 or 5.5 in southern sumatra right before i hit record on this video in the last 24 hours, there have been 49 earthquakes over 4.0, four of them over 5.0. Somebody asked me yesterday, they said, can you please count up how many there are like over 3.0 each day? And I'm like, it's just too many. I counted over 3.5 and up yesterday. It was 111. But a lot of people don't realize there, there was thousands of earthquakes in the last week in Canada, British Columbia, near the coastal area. All low, you know, low ones, twos and ones and threes. And there's a lot of earthquakes. When I'm covering 4.0 and higher, those are the ones that are a little bit stronger, you know. All right, so we finally heard yesterday what's going on in the palace. It's, uh, this is from Insider Paper. Catherine, Princess of Wales, announces a cancer diagnosis. Catherine... Princess of Wales on Friday announced that she has cancer and is in the early stages of chemotherapy, asking for time, space, and privacy as she completes her treatment. 
Kate, as she is widely known, said the discovery of cancer after successful abdominal surgery in January it was a huge shock, but she was well and getting stronger every day. So that's what went on there. That's what all the stuff was about. And, you know, and I like her. She's, you know, I don't know that much about her, but, uh, you know, she seems like, I'll pray, I'll pray for her. We should pray for her. Pray she gets to know Jesus, really. Uh, this is from Insider Paper. A solar eclipse could cause mass chaos at hundreds of airports due to disruption. Air travel could be disrupted from April 7th through April 10th, the FAA warned, all because of the solar eclipse. It could cause mass chaos at hundreds of airports? How come it didn't do that in 2017? I guess the population it's hit in this time is a lot higher. I don't know. They seem like they're preparing us for something, don't they? Air travel could be disrupted from April 7th through April 10th. Three days. Hmm. Interesting. Let's fly the, friend, the friendly skies. Listen to this. American Airlines passenger. You know, something happens in planes every day. Either they're pouring out oil, panels are flying out the window, doors are trying to be opened, or the people are psychotic. <laughs> but it's like, I've never seen it like this. Every day it's something. American Airlines passengers threatened to take down the plane with all the passengers on it. This happened yesterday. A passenger causing trouble on an American Airlines flight, as seen in a widely circulated video, which I didn't see the video, was put in a headlock and removed from the plane. This person, identified as 29-year-old Shail Patel from Florida, was reported to have made hateful remarks and threats while intoxicated. Court documents reveal that Patel shouted derogatory slurs. He called other passengers blue-eyed white, de blue white devils. Sounds like a band from the late 60s. And threatened to bring the plane down with everyone on board. Patel faced charges of two counts of battery, one count of disorderly intoxication, and a few kind, counts of psychotic episodes. No, I just added that. No, and all classified as misdemeanors. He was held. Oh, they'll let him go. Nobody goes to jail for nothing anymore. They'll let him go. Kidding me? I guess you don't. You just, he had a strong smell of alcohol. I guess, you know, you don't drink and fly. Crazy. <laughs> we're, we're living in cloud world. We are living we're, these last days. See, I've been looking at Bible prophecy for 40 something years. I never realized clowns would be involved in the last days, but it's clown world. You can't make sense of it. Listen to this one. Listen to this one. Tyson Foods working on new products with insect ingredients. <laughs> Tyson Foods, one of the largest food processing companies, announced last week it will invest in insect protein. The American food giant unveiled a partnership with Netherlands-based bug food manufacturer ProTix. Are there ticks in it too? <laughs> it's T-I-X. Oh, man. Clown World. C-L-O-Triple-W-O-N. <laughs> Don't figure out that spelling. It doesn't really make sense. It just It's got a nice feel to it. C-L-O-Triple-W-O-N. Clown World. <laughs> All right, let's get to... A testimony of the day. Okay? Mary. How Jesus saved a wretch like me. I was living in the world. I was angry with God. He had taken my brother David at the age of 32. David had four small children when he died. I helped to raise them. I lived right next to a church, two doors down. One Sunday morning, those church bells were ringing inside my bedroom and in my heart. After a night of partying and dancing, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, get up, get ready. The Holy Spirit, uh, I'm sorry, I am waiting for you with open arms. I was saved that very day. I was 24 years old. Years later, I was married in that same church. And my husband of 24 years and I were baptized together in that same church. Our first real date was at that church. He asked me to marry him on a Sunday morning at that church. When we said our vows at the altar in front of God, he got on one knee to say his promise to me in front of all of our family and guests. I have lost many loved ones, my mom, my dad, and three brothers, 
and my best friend Chelsea. But our Lord, Jesus Christ, my Savior, has carried me through it all. A true testament of his love for me and for us all. I just wanted our Watching River Family channel to see and to know how wonderful and amazing our King Jesus truly is. What if I had said no to the Holy Spirit on that Sunday morning? I often wonder what would have become of me. But now I don't need to worry or wonder anymore. I am saved, washed in his blood, and sealed because of his grace. I have been forgiven. Amen. Amen, Mary. Yes, you have. Amen. Yesterday, I highly recommend, if you didn't see the first 10 minutes of yesterday's video, that you watch it. I highly recommend it because I shared a testimony and there were hundreds of comments of people either saying they cried or saying like, Tom, I'm 68 years old. I That's the best testimony I've ever heard in my entire life. I highly recommend you go to yesterday's video if you didn't see it and watch the first 10 minutes. The story of Emily and Dennis. You just, you gotta hear it. You gotta hear it. So a couple of these comments talk about that, just so you know. This is from Healthy. My Lord, that testimony you shared of the little girl and the 99-year-old man had the tears flowing. God is moving still, folks. That's why we're still here. My good friend shared this morning that her dad passed a couple days ago. I gasped, but she said she was so calm as she shared that she had a chance to tell him that she forgave him for leaving the family. But what she shared next had me praising God. Her dad said during that visit that he was sad that he would never see her again after he passed. He had given his life to the Lord, but knew she hadn't. He led her to the Lord by his bedside that day. I was overcome with emotion because I had been praying for her the last three months intensely. I just about gave up. But God, he said, behold, I will do a new thing. And boy, oh boy, did he ever. How beautiful is that? Thank you for sharing that. Wow. I've never heard of a bedside, you know, like a deathbed conversion the other way. <laughs> I've never heard of that, where the guy dying leads somebody to the Lord. That's his own daughter. Beautiful. Thank you. D. When you're reading the story about the little girl leading her 99-year-old neighbor to the Lord, it brought tears to my face. What a precious little girl Emily is. She is a beacon of light. The verse, a little child shall lead them, came to mind. Praise the Lord. I agree. I agree. Praise the Lord. Once was lost. What a beautiful testimony. I'm a grown man crying listening to that. Absolutely awesome. How I wish the world would get saved and follow Jesus. I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. Sherry, this story about the nine-year-old reminded me of my eight-year-old granddaughter who loves Jesus and is excited to go to heaven. We were at Walmart and the checkout lady was busy and kind of seemed grumpy. My granddaughter looked at her and said, you know, Jesus loves you and he's coming to take us to heaven soon. The lady looked at her and smiled, but did not know what to think. This is not the first time my granddaughter has done this, and she shares the good news about God at recess at school. I am waiting for my daughter to tell me she got a call from school that her daughter is talking inappropriately at recess and then tell me to tone it down a bit. But of course I will not. God bless all the children and keep them safe from evil. Amen. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. Ben Walker, I knew God sent me here. What a story. Only Jesus can do that. What a beautiful story. The tears of joy are flowing. I'm with you, Ben. I'm with you. I couldn't even, like, I had to read that and really kind of disconnect. I had already read it because if I read it, I would have bawled the whole way through. So people were saying in the comments, I'm really surprised you didn't cry, Tom. It's like, thank you. <laughs> Lori. Wow, I am rejoicing over Emily and Dennis's story. Can I scream too? Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, you can, Lori. You can. Do you want to hear an update? Dennis sent me an email last night. Because I told him, you got to go to the comments below the video. See what people are saying about you and Emily. 
Well, I'm going to give you an update. This video might go a little longer today. But just, you know, if you're bored, shut it off. This is from Dennis. My brother Tom. Emily's parents and I waited until just minutes ago to watch your channel today. This was last night. They asked me over for dinner today, for which I accepted. Emily very quickly picked up on the story today, even before you said her name. She said, Jesus wrote Tom an email to tell him about us. I have never once lied to her, and I told her that I had written the email. She stood for a minute silent and still. Then she put her tiny hand on my shoulder and looked me right in the face and said, We weren't in clown world. <laughs> this guy's 99 years old. You wouldn't think that an old person like myself could experience anything new. However, since yesterday, I have seen, heard, and felt so much better about living. That's what Jesus does to you. I was just 17 when I climbed over the... You guys won't believe this, what he's about to say. You won't believe it. I was just 17 when I climbed over the side of that Navy destroyer and into the bobbing Higgins boat. I was a Marine, and yes, I was afraid. I also was probably the only person who didn't know Jesus in the entire boat. Only three of us made it to the beach, and I was the only one of the three to make it home. Last night, a miracle happened. As I lay there in my bed, a voice that I hadn't heard since that very awful day when we hit the beach in Normandy spoke as clear to me as you sounded today. It was buggy my Marine buddy who never made it to the beach. He said in a very joyful tone, see you real soon, Jarhead. And this morning as I sat at my piano and played as I have for years, all of a sudden I began to play the same boggy woggy tune that I played in that bombed out farmhouse somewhere on the battlefield. I have never once played that since that day. Oh, yeah, brother, we are all going home very soon. Keep up your efforts until then. I love you, brother. I'm going to go eat now. And I even asked them if I could say the blessing tonight, too. Dennis. He's a World War II vet, too. Man. Incredible. Incredible. All right, I'm going to share the gospel. Because this is, you know, reading the scripture and sharing the gospel is the two most important things that I do in these videos. The other stuff is just sharing news that's pointing to the rapture because we're very close to the rapture. But this is the important stuff because there are people that share these videos that don't know the Lord, you know, with people who don't know the Lord. Or they're on the fence. And I've been coming here almost two years. It'll be two years on April 4th if we're still here. Who knows? I don't know. I don't look for days and hours. I just know we're close to the rapture. It could happen today. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen in September. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just looking up every day. But there are people that watch this that don't know Jesus. And I think, I, I just don't think they understand What's coming to this world? I, I, it's almost hard saying what's coming. Because I feel like we're at the doorstep. It's here. That seven-year tribulation could start at any moment. The rapture happens first. And then the seven-year tribulation. And I think it could start at any moment. And if you don't know Jesus, you may be left here in the most horrific time you could ever imagine. It's the worst time, according to Scripture, since mankind was created. That's what's coming to this world very, very, very soon. I don't want anyone to be left behind. I want you to come with us. Jesus came here 2,000 years ago. He came here to solve the sin problem. Because every human being has a problem. It's called sin. And some people who aren't believers hear this and they feel like you're pointing your finger at them saying you're a terrible person. I'm here to tell you we're all terrible people. <laughs> That's good news. We're all terrible people. 
<laughs> but Jesus came to this world for one purpose, to shed blood, to cover the sins of ever, every sin that's ever been committed, to cover them so that we could be washed white as snow and we could appear in eternity because of what Jesus did and we could be accepted for eternity and be in the immediate family of God because of what Jesus did. He came here and he put on flesh and he lived perfectly because he's the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God, meaning he was going to be slaughtered. That blood has to be shed in order for sins to be forgiven. And Jesus is that one time, once and for all payment for sin. He'll never go up on the cross again. There's no need for it. The power of his blood has the power to remove every sin that's ever been committed. So no, he, he'll never go up again on a cross. That was a one-time payment. But you're left with the decision of, do I say, oh my goodness, Jesus left the throne in heaven to come here to be slaughtered, to pay for my sins with his blood? And then he went to the cross and died and rose again the third day? I want that. I believe in the power of that blood. Once you put your faith in that blood, you are washed white as snow. Once you believe in his finished work of going to the cross and being buried, dying, being buried, rising again the third day, and you believe in the power of the blood, you're saved, you're born again. God will put his Holy Spirit in you. You'll be sealed into the day of redemption. You'll be rapture ready. You won't have to worry about what's coming to this world. But if you hear this message and you say, no, I don't need that. You're going to end up on judgment day standing before Jesus, kneeling, I'm guessing, before Jesus. Seeing the scars in his hands and thinking, I turned down the payment. When I heard that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords paid for my sins with his blood, I said, no, I don't want that. I'm okay. Leave me alone, you, you fanatics. I turned down the payment for my sins. Then you get led off to eternal separation from God because you rejected the payment for your sins. It's that simple. I don't want anyone to do that. Today is the day of salvation. If any of this is making sense to you, you run to Jesus. You run to Jesus. You tell him, I understand your blood has removed all my sins. It will wash me white as snow. I believe that that's going to happen. I believe in the power of that blood. Bam, your sins are washed away. You're washed white as snow. I believe in your finished work on the cross and that you resurrected on the third day. You're saved. Believe in that today. Don't put it off. You don't have time to put it off. Time is getting short. We are on the eve of something. I don't know what it is. But it's something huge. And I really want to know if you guys think we are too. Because I, I think we are. But that's what I got. I'm going to shut the camera off now. And I'm going to say a prayer for every person who watched this video. And if we're not raptured today. And man, today would be a perfectly good day for the rapture. Especially with all this rain. Just burst through those clouds. Be with Jesus. But if not today, it will be soon. And God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys.